Hi, everyone. My name is Julia Friedlander. I'm the Seaboard and Gray Senior Fellow and Deputy Director of the Atlanta Council's Geoeconomics Program. I am, it is my absolute honor today to welcome President of Estonia, Kirsty Kallilid, to discuss the Organization of Economic Cooperation and Development, one of the world's perhaps um, most underrated but very crucial organizations to global economic governance. And Madam President, um, we're, we're delighted that you're running for Secretary General for the position, um, and it's a really an opportunity to speak with you today. I was wondering if I might be able to open by asking what your priorities might be for the organization, especially as we come out of the COVID crisis. Thank you, and thanks for organizing this uh, discussion. It is true that OECD is um, maybe a little bit less known multilateral body than it should be because it's a wonderful uh, data source, a wonderful think tank, and actually it's a G20 secretariat as well. So it is doing quite a lot and uh, I believe uh, it's also proven by the high number of candidates who are running for secretary general. Every bead needs at least three pillars to support it. So for me, first and foremost, is OECD is the club of democratic nations. You need an economic explanation for that. Well, there is one, obviously. If you look uh, how countries have been developing economically, then you can uh, draw yourself out of poverty, get among the middle income countries without being a democracy. But from then on, to become really a rich nation, uh, a country which can show sustainable economic development, you need to unleash the creativity of your people. And only in democratic countries, we have seen this, this capability to freely create and sustain long-term uh, economic success. We are seeing how in, uh, in China, for example, which is not a democracy, but is economically quickly developing, now entrepreneurs like Jack Ma are hurting themselves against the glass ceiling. This should prove us, uh, if we observe it, that actually OECD is a club for democratic nations. Second, I believe this COVID-19 has shown to the whole world what we in Estonia knew before. Quite a lot of our jobs today are geographically neutral. You can do them from wherever you are global, which obviously means that instead of a simple global uh, market for goods, we are also seeing global services market developing. But our tax systems and our uh, social security systems, the way our states function vis-a-vis -vis our citizens, they are stuck in industrial area. They expect us to go in one place to work from nine to five and uh, uh, put in a number of hours before you can uh, have a vacation, before you can have social cover and all this. But this is yesterday's system. We need to adapt to this global services uh, market which we are seeing developing. And this adaptation has to be smart because you can adapt by restricting opportunities and you can adapt by making sure that it's inclusive. I believe in inclusivity, and this is also, I believe, OECD's uh, work to analyze, to benchmark, and to suggest ways forward. In addition, there is the third pillar, and third pillar for me is obviously climate change. We see now that also while exiting um, this COVID-19 pandemic, people are thinking on uh, how we could change uh, our economies while we are supporting them to survive. And one biggest element clearly is green turn. But with the green turn, if you look what is happening, more than 100 nations have pledged neutrality by 2050. And they are all contemplating how to achieve it. The normal answer is you will set some restrictions to technologies which are old fashioned and some advantages for technologies which are green. What does that mean? From the economic viewpoint, this actually is a market distortion. How on earth will we keep our markets open while each and everybody is exercising these kind of market distortions? Again, a phenomenon which OECD can analyze, measure, show what is helping, what is just protectionism in disguise, etc. So I see OECD never being political, influencing our, uh, our thinking on policymaking quite radically in next decades. Thank you so much. And of course, Estonia is a digital leader, right? I think you might be at the forefront of, uh, of social digitalization. Um, but one of the sticky issues that we're dealing with right now is, of course, the digital services tax. And it's become a point of transatlantic contention. Um, but, you know, I, I think it's a, almost a point of comfort that we're dealing with it within, a, as you say, a technocratic economic organization. Um, how, how do you think you would, you would lead us through this um, in the coming years? I believe that uh, 
it is a huge proposed experiment because normally we just, well, even in European Union, we have harmonized tax base, but never tax levels. So in this sense, it is an experiment. We cannot predict what is going to uh, be the outcome, but it might be worth a try to experiment with, uh, with this kind of development. Maybe one way is convincing the companies themselves that it is a honorable uh, thing to do. And maybe the second element is we can go and say, let's do this for a couple of years and see how the, how the market is changing, how we are able and capable to gather the tax in Europe. Estonia is of the position that it should be an EU own resource, so we shouldn't actually force the companies to distribute all the, all the revenues between European Union countries. This position should help to convince the companies as well. And I believe since we also observe in developed world that uh, for decades now, labor has been underpaid because we need social support, we need social housing, in-job benefits, etc then maybe helping with the tax base could also be a mission, a mission for the uh, companies who, uh, who are, well, quite influential in this world. From the other side, if this is not the case to uh, the companies like, then there is another option. Let's decrease indeed our intervention in the labor markets. The governments don't need to subsidize labor costs if companies pay fair amount of salaries. So there are many ways in how to look at the problem and maybe one way of looking at the problem explains for us suddenly that we can resolve this issue. But we need to get this tax into, into context. Uh, this is just one element, taxing big companies. What I am talking is, is digital nomads. People working in 10 different companies in five different countries, getting their revenues on the PayPal account how they can prove to their government that this is what they earned and that this is complete what they earn. This is the real problem, not how to tax four or five uh, multinationals. Maybe also putting this into perspective helps us to move forward. Thank you, absolutely. And Madam President, you um, you know oversee one of Europe's most successful economies. You're a very outspoken um, member of NATO, strong NATO ally. Um, I was wondering if I might be able to ask you, you know, how, do, how would you bring to bear all of this experience that you've had uh, running a, a small and very advanced European economy to a large multinational organization? Well, never set your objectives too low. Have high aspirations. When I was uh, chair, uh, leading the campaign of Estonia for United Nations Security Council, then in one conference, somebody said that, you know, small countries, they can tweak the agenda maybe a little bit. I was so angry. I mean, small countries have never time for small objectives. If we come on international scheme, if we work together with our wonderful transatlantic partners like you and everybody else on the other side of Atlantic, this is to leverage our objectives to the level where we can achieve big time. Estonia is in digital world a catalyst, and we want to be catalyzed for the whole developed world. We have already proven our value in Europe. I am quite sure that European digital identity pledge for each and every citizen would not exist if Estonia had not shown the way. And we really see that we have many issues which we need to resolve because of the digital services development, because of the artificial intelligence, which in developed world is lagging behind. We need common agreement, also transatlantic partnership, to make sure our AI can learn as quickly as, as maybe Chinese AI can, because they don't have the problems with people's, uh, people's privacy and data. We do, but we need to resolve these problems, overcome these problems. And we, we in Estonia see that only in multilateral world can we resolve it also to the benefit of our own free open economy. Yeah, that's absolutely right. I think that small countries sometimes can lead the way when large countries can't. Um, and I would be remiss also to not to recognize Estonia's leadership in the three C's, one of the major initiatives that we have to shore up infrastructure and investment in, in Europe, especially in Central and Eastern Europe. Um, you know, this is, you know, we're, we're delighted that you're a candidate here. Um, wish you very much luck. I'll ask you one more question. Um, you know, what else, what else is on the agenda? You mentioned climate, you mentioned digital, you mentioned economic recovery. You know, is there anything else we should, we should chat about? Yes, uh, we have been maybe sometimes talking about the OECD represents less of a percentage of the economy than it did. And then there is the question of enlargement. I'm all for enlargement. And you know why I'm all for enlargement? Because 
we have a moral issue here. Estonia joined the Union, European Union in 2004, NATO 2004, UN welcomed us back when we regained our independence. We just cannot close the bus doors and drive away. Uh, we have to be open and I believe OECD should also enlarge. And then I would also like to say to our transatlantic partners that indeed uh, handling the Free Seas Initiative for, well, as fate had it, more than one year has definitely made me a better international negotiator because we set ourselves the objective to ground the Free Seas Initiative into something really practical. And I believe together with America, we were able to deliver. It's now a practical initiative with resources to its name. And I have great hopes and high hopes that private sector can uh, contribute to the development of uh, three seas countries in the, uh, in the future with billions and billions. Thank you. Thank you very much. And Madam President, again, thank you so much for joining us today from the Atlanta Council. We wish you and your team uh, a happy and above all healthy new year. Happy and healthy new year to everybody on the other side of the ocean as well. Thank you for having me today with you.